This episode of Love Lauren is sponsored by Scott Bonner Fabrication and Parts. order of business will be to install the height adjuster um, screw. So that's this L-shaped doodad and it fits through a little um, sort of kidney shaped slot on the side and through a hole in the cradle, sorry. Before we do that I'm just going to pop on here the large retaining washer with the, the large circle in the middle and a little spring and I've got a bolt for the other side here and of course our height adjuster knob and we'll get the little retaining clip in place once this is all back together. I'll feed that up to the top, pop that into the hole and then just pop our um, bolt on the back side of that, sorry our nut on the back side of that going to use a little bit of multi-purpose and um, three-in-one oil, um, just penetrating oil down um, down the length of that shaft. We'll let that sort of run in and do its thing. Mainly just to lubricate, but um, also just to protect the the threads there a little bit as well. Just help that along. So that just screws in to the right. Obviously this is an older machine, so I've got the original brass head adjuster instead of the steel. And it's going to fit very nicely, I believe, right down that shaft. So just going to keep on screwing until we start to get a bit of tension there. Which is what we want. And I'll tighten that nut up on the inside. I'm not sure what size that uh, that nut is on the inside. Um, the half inch socket fits around it, but the head of my um, wrench doesn't. I'm really it sort of interferes with the bar. Um, and my half inch um, ring spanner doesn't fit around there at all. So I'm just going to go really carefully. Try and get that snugged up without causing too much damage. To me. Just using my fingers to sort of prevent the head of the wrench from interacting with that um, the top bar of the cradle. Funny shaped um, nut as well, sort of a slightly domed nut. So, getting a good, um, getting good purchase on all sides of it is uh, a little bit awkward. Probably go a little bit further on that one. Still turning, so what I don't want to do is um, immobilize the front roller um, all together by doing this thing up too tightly. Um, same with um, with these little um, bolts, we just want to make sure they're backed off enough so that this thing can, can pivot of its own accord. So that's, and that's good. I'm going to keep screwing that height adjuster down and that's, um, it's looking pretty good. From there it's a question of popping that spring up in place and then our washer compressing the spring and getting the little um, clip in place. There's a little groove if you can see it um, on the height adjuster. So I'm going to use every tool that I can to get, um, to get that spring compressed just enough so that I can get that clip in there. This is one of the harder tasks on these machines. Um, 
There's a couple different approaches. I've got the multi grips here, which we'll need to be careful with because we don't want to mar anything. Quick uh, clamps have been used in the past by various people. Um, a thin flat bladed screwdriver just to prise the thing in. A um, little hammer to tap the pin the rest of the way once it's started. Um, as I say, whatever works. Got our little retaining washer and spring on there. There's, I sort of tried to get them up in place. There's not a lot of wiggle room on the inside of this L bracket. Um, mainly the you know, either the little bit of paint or a bit of a uh, bit of metal that's sort of um, sticking out. But um, basically, we've got that um, retaining washer just sitting in the little recess for the for this clip. Um, so the the challenge now is to get that spring sort of raised up and the whole washer so that um, enough so that we can get that um, started. If you have someone who's not going to drive you batty while you're doing this um, it might be a good time to sort of call them in because if you can you know, just use your fingers to get that spring up and that clip started that's all it takes and then you can sort of you can go from there What I've done there is just um, lifted that spring up a touch and popped a driver, a flat headed screwdriver in there for now. Sort of the upper range of of movement, just gauging by the, the slot on the side of the machine there. That's our lovely brass height adjuster in place now. Got a little black grommet to go in there. Some of them, a lot of the guys use red ones, um, just from from the various suppliers. I've got a little black uh, um, blind grommet, I think it's called, from Clark Rubber to fit in there. But we'll do that towards the end of this rebuild, I think. Flashback. This is the bronze brass, whatever it is, height adjuster that came on the 14 inch solid. It was covered in paint and um, you know all this sort of natural metal was just all covered up. So I sandblasted it back and to my surprise I found um, this beautiful sort of bronzy color underneath. Um, with the, the twin has a um, steel or alloy height adjuster knob on it, so a little bit different. Um, I believe the, the early model um, 45s and the solid decks came with the cast bronze um, knob. Anyway, I kind of instantly fell in love with it because it's got a lot of character to it. The little sort of indentations and bumps and lumps from the casting process itself. Um, and they'd sort of filled with grime over the years. In addition, um, it's probably hard to see on the video, but um, some of the sort of the surfaces where you interact with the thing had sort of rubbed um, smooth as well, so you just from use over the years, which was kind of cool. I think just sort of you know to think back to the the guys who've used this more in the past. I really kind of liked it as is, um, but um, I did want to make sure it was in line with the rest of the the restoration um, and what I'm doing to this mower. Um, so in particular, I've got the um, solid brass. Um, clutch lever knob on there and there's the, the brass um, thrust pad on the on the clutch shaft as well so I've got a few sort of you know sort of yellowy bronzy colored items on there and I sort of I sort of want them all to match at least in terms of the the shine and the, the polish the color is going to probably vary a little bit but um, you know I guess when I was looking at this thing I was thinking you know I kind of like all the crust and the, the dirt and the grime in there but um, it would be nice to shine it up a little bit. What I got was this little set from Bunning. There's the, um, the size of the little wheel and the calico uh, wheel as well. And I got a stick of this green um, SSX polishing compound to go with. I don't have a, a wheel, a buffing wheel or a grinder myself, so that's why I went with the drill mount option. And what I've done is just um, pop this on the um, the bottom section of the height adjuster just to 
give it something to mount to while I'm um, in the vice while I'm, while I'm working on it. And uh, I basically um, went to town with the, um, with the wire brush and the drill. Um, safety goggles, of course. Yeah, just kind of like that, low speed, um, moving it um, frequently, and I'm surprised how quickly you actually work. That's sort of where the wire brush is taken us. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a few sort of little spots I've missed, but I think I'm going to leave them because I kind of like them, um, just like that. And um, I guess the one area that I didn't touch too much was this sort of bottom um, shafty section where it fits through the little ring um, angle. Um, on the side of the motor because I didn't want I didn't want too much play in that section. At this stage, I'm ready to move back onto the sizal. Um, with the, I'll start with the green compound, I think, and um, you know see what happens. Um, I guess um, you know I probably should get a get the faster cutting compound really to try and move on from the wire brush a little bit. But um, I'm just curious. I'm going to give this a go and see see how those scratches turn out. This has started to blacken up a little bit from the compound, so that means you know there's a bit of swarf or whatever um, coming off of this stuff, um, and it is leaving that behind on here. So I'll have to clean that up um, once I'm finished. But um, for now, I guess it shows me sort of where I'm working. To admit I'm you know happier with that um, polish than I thought I would be at this point. I've still got the calico buff if I want to give it a try and try and get it a bit shinier. So is that shinier? Definitely. Um, really body shiny actually, so I think I'll keep going with that. Well, I reckon that's um, pretty much done. Got a very nice shine to this, which I'm really happy with. And you know, I've still got all the not patina necessarily, but the um, the casting marks. So that's exactly what I wanted. Um, still a bit of uh, character in terms of grime and stuff. I'll give this a little wash, probably just with some warm soapy water. The instructions from this compound side are um, after polishing to wash it down with um, methylated spirits or warm soapy water. I guess the only other question is whether um, this needs any um, protection over it. Oxidization will take its toll on this knob and getting it on and off isn't the most straightforward of activities. Um, I don't really want to put a clear coat on it because I just, just don't really like the idea. Uh, could I go a bit further here? Yeah, probably could. Um, could use it and move to the finer, um, uh, what is it, the white compound in the Joyco brand um, and get a bit more shine out of that, but um, to be honest, like, that's um, that's reflecting the light on it. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. Um, it's got a nice shine to it. It looks cool. So, and it matches what I've got, I think. So I'm going to stick with that, I think, and call the job done. Mm -hmm. 